Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the different skills you need to work on to get through every rank in Dota and gain MMR. In my opinion, of course, everyone is unique. So um, just because I think this is the most common issue for Crusaders, for example, that may not apply to you, but I will be talking through all the different skills that I think make a good Dota 2 player. So hopefully it will be helpful to everyone. You can just identify a bit for yourself. Uh, supports and cores. I'm not really picking one or the other. This is just good Dota 2 fundamentals in this video that I want to talk about. I want to begin by talking a little bit about the Trench. I think a lot of people have misconceptions about this. The Trench is not Herald, it's not Guardian, it's not Divine. The Trench is stagnation. It's whenever you play a lot of games and end up at a 50% win rate, so you're just stuck at wherever you are. That could happen in Guardian, it could happen in Legend, Ancient, anywhere, really. So the thing about the trench is that a lot of people think to escape it, it's just like a simple trick they've been missing this whole time. A five minute video, 80% win rate, right? That will actually be the case for a couple of you and I'm a little jealous of that. But for most of us, if you've been playing hundreds to thousands of games in the same bracket, you have something fundamentally stuck. You're either doing something bad, you have some bad habits, or you just haven't been building good habits in that time, and that's why you're stuck in this trench for so long. We aren't looking for this miraculous breakthrough. 50-50, that is the trench. We're just looking for these good habits, things to work on, that will help us win a couple extra games here and there to then get out of the trench. So as we go through these skills, I'm not saying you're gonna win every single game if you work on last hitting, right? But there will be maybe five to 10 games that will have been decided by just having better last hits. You win or lose from that snowball of having that advantage or not. So keep this in mind. I think it's important to have the right framework. Um, we need to do some work. We need to build habits. It will take some time and it'll be a little subtle because you know it's only a win here and there. Uh, it's not so obvious sometimes to people and that can be a little disheartening. But I do wanna say like, if you've been stuck in a trench for uh, especially approaching like thousands of games, um, it's gonna take a little bit to get out of here. Uh, it's not gonna be easy. Let's get into it though. So a lot of people break this down by mechanics and gameplay. Let's start with that. Mechanics to me is physically playing the game, right? Whatever human to video game interface there is, your computer, yeah, for most of us, maybe a controller for a couple people. But mechanics is like pressing the buttons quickly. So uh, abilities and items. I also wanna throw out camera control, which I think a lot of people don't think about, but moving the camera around, moving your eyes around all over the place, right? You need to do this to gather information. It's a physical aspect of playing the game. There's also a little bit of a, uh, like a rhythm game element to Dota where there are certain timings, right? You gotta like hit the buttons at the right times to, uh, to get whatever you're getting. So last hits especially, but this also includes things like not overlapping stuns on a target, right, to get the pick off on the carry. Instead, they get the, the BKB off and they just wipe the enemy team, right? Oops, game decider right there. And it was just a matter of timing, a few seconds, you know? Um, stacking, pulling, an enemy hero walks into fog of war. I have a skill shot in one second. You know, where do I aim it? How far can they run? That kind of thing. It's this timing component to Dota in the framework of a few seconds. There's also a larger timing aspect as part of awareness, which I'm talking about like the game clock. Um, this is something I'm gonna emphasize in a lot more videos going forward. I'm coming to realize that many people struggle with this. Uh, mini map awareness and then like the game clock. Um, so like one minute, two minute, day, night, that sort of thing. I actually think these two things help with a lot of the decision making and many people are not used to collecting this information, like physically looking up at the, the time, then down to the, the minimap, then back at their screen, then up, down, you know, all of that. They tend to tunnel vision on their hero and what is mainly on their screen. But you have to remember the game is pretty big. The map's large, there's nine other players. We gotta zoom back out, be aware of everything else going on in the game, not just our own perspective. Zoom in, get a couple last hits. Zoom out, what time is it? Oh, I gotta think about rune soon, minimap. Oh, not top rune, I see four people there, right? Okay, zoom back in, another last hit, zoom back out. You know, all this stuff, constantly going in and out. That's something you have to work on if you're not used to it. You gotta build that habit of not uh, getting like two in your head about what you're doing. Like all oh, these little last hits, right? You're forgetting the bigger picture of the game, what items people are building, what uh, levels they are, where they are on the map, you know, all of that, what their cooldowns are. So. 
that is the physical action of like collecting information and then doing actions to uh, for mechanics. Game knowledge is why we're collecting information. So with that information, what do I do with it? I know about the game, so here's the correct decision to make based on what I've collected. So there's things like hero knowledge and itemization. Uh, I think this is probably fairly obvious to a lot of people of like, you know, what does my hero do? What do their heroes do? What items do I build? What skill build? Um, and I guess it's a good time to say, of course, there is a range of this. So if you're in Herald, I'm just expecting some very basic builds, you know, nothing too crazy. And then as you get further on, I want to see like, I'm adapting to the given game. You know, I am buying this item first in this game, even though it's not a very common item because it's really good this game. You know, um, all of these skills have a wide range of how in depth and how good you have to be at it. But that is the like basic category of the, uh, the skill. The last two parts of game knowledge are purpose and game plan. I think this is where a lot of people feel they struggle with. And I did a poll uh, on the YouTube channel actually, and many people said game knowledge was their issue. And a lot of comments led to uh, me understanding it's like this purpose and game plan, which by that I mean for game plan, what is the overarching plan of how you win a Dota game, right? I got to take their ancient. To do that, I got to take the tier three. To do that, you know, Roshan, other towers, right? But what does that actually mean? How do I do that? What am I looking for? When do I do that, right? The more steps you can lay out and the more different branching options so that, oh, they're doing this, so time to do this path. Oh, they are now actually doing this, so I'm gonna go do that, right? The more you can do that, the better your game plan is, how your team will actually win Dota. And then your individual role in that, that's your purpose. So here are the three roles my team needs to get done um, for the game plan. Which one do I do as the support, as the core? Am I the farmer? Am I the space maker? Should I be in the bottom part of the map, the top part of the map? This stuff is a little hard and I'm gonna be thinking on it to how I can help more of you understand like your purpose, the overarching game plan, stuff like that. However, I actually think many of you are better at this than you realize. And the true issue is going back to this awareness where I found in coachings, if I provide guided questions like, hey, there's two people down here and you actually just killed another guy and you know another one's up here, like what should you do? And I get the right answer from many of the students. So it's come to my attention that I don't think game knowledge is the issue for um, everyone. It's actually the fact that you just didn't collect the information. So you weren't able to use your knowledge because you just didn't know. You're just like taking blind guesses because you weren't zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out, all of that. So of course, some people do need to work on game plan and purpose. It is a very complicated game, right? It's why I like it. Um, and we'll work on that too. But I do want to challenge many of you, work on this mini map and this timing awareness. Uh, I think it might actually help you It'll at least go hand in hand, right? Where to make a game plan, you're going to have to be aware of this stuff. Um, so even if it's not all clear right now, just know that it is interconnected. Finally, there are three mystery skills, which I didn't feel fell under mechanics or game knowledge, but of course it's all arbitrary, so you could throw them under there if you want. Uh, but I'm going to reveal them later because I think it'll make more sense as we talk about it. Um, and it's also a bait to get you to watch the video further. <laughs> Harold is going to be a special place. The reason for this is that there is a skill floor in Dota, which is that, actually, I don't know if I'm using that term right, but 10 MMR is the lowest you can be ranked in Dota 2. So there are people who are genuinely 10 MMR, but there's actually people who are worse than 10 MMR. They go into the negatives, right? Probably like negative 500, negative 1,000. Like, I know you've seen it, right? I'm not here to flame those people, but they exist. And so the trouble with matchmaking is that technically all those people are 10 MMR or, you know, sometimes they accidentally win a game so they go up to 40 MMR, you know, something like that. So between 10 and 500 MMR, you actually have a much wider range on the lower end of it. Uh, so some of the games get really weird they're not like what you see in pro dota or like what you'd expect um and it's not really anyone's fault because if you're new to the game and you're like bad you know you're bad um but that is why harold can get pretty weird and i think it's important to not get too caught up in that get too angry about like oh this guy's so bad of course he's bad this is harold so 
The thing about Harold is you just have to win in spite of bad people. You will never make progress if you blame your teammates. And I know it's very tempting, like, oh, they lost me the game. Sometimes they will genuinely lose you the game, but there is no control. You will repeatedly get bad teammates, griefing teammates through Harold. You simply must be better than them, more so than other ranks. However, the good news is that at Harold, the skill level is not that high. So no offense, again, no offense. We're all, we're all looking to improve and learn here. All respect, right? So you just gotta work on yourself and achieve this like level of fundamental skill and also adapt a little bit to Harold. You can't play regular Dota, whether you're a core or a support, you gotta play Harold Dota, but play it well. Fundamentally sound, weird Dota. So we'll get into that a little bit more. Harold, there's like two kinds of players in Harold. There's the new player, which we've already talked about a little bit. You're just like new to the game. You know, you're, you're bad because you don't know anything about Dota, of course. So just get used to pressing buttons, um, know where all your abilities are, how to open shop, courier, all of that. We don't have to worry too much about it um, because a lot of it comes with just playing the game. Same with hero knowledge and itemization. I'm just expecting some basic knowledge. Here's a regular skill build I should go for. Here are some decent items in most games, right? Just a very cookie cutter build and you will absorb this stuff as you play or as you watch some educational content, go into bots, custom lobbies, stuff like that, read the wiki, um, Dota buff, open uh, Dota, Dota 2 Pro Tracker. We have a good amount of sites where you can like find uh, pro level builds, stuff like that. So this stuff will just come as you play the game. I think these players tend to be, let's say less than 500 hours into Dota, which is a little crazy to think you could be a beginner after 500 hours, but Dota is, that old of a game and that complex that really, if you're below 500, I would call you new. So I am not that worried about this kind of Herald player. You're really still just adapting to the game in this time. Some of you will go through it faster, but if you're around this range, like really don't worry about it. Just slowly absorb this knowledge, get used to the button pressing. And the main thing I want you to be thinking about are your last hits and your map awareness. This is the exact same thing I want the second type of Herald player to work on, which is the Herald player who has been here for more than 500 hours, who's been here for maybe thousands of hours. There are usually some fundamentally flawed elements in Herald players who have been here that long. Um, it's either through mechanics or game knowledge. Game knowledge, for example, they are either here so long that they're using old memories. So like, this was the build, when I played, you know, and I'm going to keep doing it. But actually, it's been like three years since then. The patches are very different and you have to update that knowledge. And if you're not taking that time to update your knowledge, you're just doing suboptimal stuff all of the time. Or they're trying to adapt, which is good, but the logic is a little flawed. For example, I die all the time. I'll build Heart of Tarask first item because it gives me a lot of health and it gives me a lot of HP regen, which is true but it is overlooking the fact that there's a flow to the game and that the buildup for Heart of Tarask is awful. And so if you try to go that item first, you're really having this huge period of inefficiency and weakness, and it would be better to go smaller items, farming items, and then you have a faster farming speed, the creeps are worth more because the game has progressed, and then you build a Heart of Tarask later. Like there's a flow that gets completely overlooked for this like smaller piece of logic. Um, so that can be game knowledge wise where Harold struggle with. However, it almost doesn't matter because if you simply have good fundamentals, like you get the last hits when they're provided to you and you have good map awareness to recognize where there's farm, but also after getting the farm contribute to your team in team fights. And that's the part that a lot of people miss. Um, you can do suboptimal stuff, but simply have so much golden XP, you are right by way of just being rich, right? It's not so different from the real world. Um, Herald players really should just work on a lot of basic fundamentals. So whether you're new or old, this is why like someone coming from League of Legends or Starcraft or old school RuneScape, if they have good fundamentals of playing video games, they will adapt to the last inning and the minimap awareness pretty quickly. And even though they don't know nothing about Dota, they don't know strategy, they don't know the hero, they're like, who's this purple guy? He just disappeared, whoa, that's crazy, right? It doesn't matter. They walk into bad fights 
with 5,000 more gold than the other Herald players, and they win the bad fights. So this is the main thing that Herald should work on. It's the easiest thing to practice. Last hits, empty lobbies, custom lobbies, work on unfair bots, that sort of thing. Like, practice it. Awareness, I think we'll have to work more in future videos, but learning to identify um, where there is farm in the map for you, whether you're a support or a core, and then successfully acquiring it, going back to the timings, like that's what I want Heralds to work on. Because being in Herald is kind of like, um, you know, Bane from, uh, not Dota, from uh, Batman, right? This is spoilers for a movie that's like a decade plus old. What's that pit? Um, there's a pit in one of the Batman movies. And whether you're born in the pit or you fall into the pit, you are stuck in the pit. That is Harold, right? Harold is this pit. And pit life is very different from life outside the pit. But you can escape the pit. You just must become very individually strong. Good fundamentals. And you will have to adapt a little bit to the weird ways of Harold. You can't play the way that you see like ancients and immortals play, right? You gotta do some weird Harold Dota. But fundamentally, you are sound. You are a strong individual. And when you escape the pit, and you get out of there, you'll realize the world does not work like pit life did, but you will still be fundamentally sound, and then you can adapt to the new world you are in. This is why, so much so, I really want to emphasize these like timings and awareness uh, elements for Herald players. I actually grouped the next couple of ranks together, which uh, the Archon players might not be so happy with, but I find that in these ranks, Guardian, Crusader, Archon, there is uh, there's a lot of variability, more so than other ranks. So like, of course, all players are varied. Like sometimes you're good at one thing, you're bad at other things, right? But there is a lot of variability in these ranks. And so what I mean by that is like, you might have one Guardian player who's not very good at pressing their buttons besides the attack button. So their last hitting timing is really good, but um, you know, their hero knowledge is not so great, awareness is okay, but they don't really know how to use that information because they don't really understand like their purpose um, or their game plan. Then you have another Guardian player who is like pretty bad at last hitting and all of that, but actually has a pretty decent understanding of how to take good fights, what they're supposed to do, all of that. Both of these players will be in Guardian and both of them have a good chance at winning Guardian games because one Guardian player might crush the laning stage and just snowball a lead from there. However, if that doesn't happen, Guardian and Crusader and Archon games tend to go quite long to the point where it kind of gets decided by a couple fights at the end of the game after like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 minute games, right? I've seen them. Um, and that's where the other Guardian player starts to come out ahead with the better purpose and game plan knowledge, um, a good enough map awareness, right, to know how to take good fights and stuff. And the thing is, this applies throughout this, like, bracket so for example here you might have a, a new player coming from another game and they're just fundamentally very sound they're very good at last it's very good at map awareness but they don't know how to use like anything and again it's fine because as long as they buy sub optimal items cookie cutter builds whatever they don't understand fully what they're doing yet they just go into fights three thousand four thousand five thousand extra gold and they win but if they don't make use of their lead, then someone with like better knowledge, but bad like early game laning, they come out ahead because they know like, hey, dodge this guy who's doing really well. Yeah, split push the map, do all this stuff, right? And they can win that way. That's why I see guardians sometimes like beat crusaders and archons like in party games, and stuff like that. Or you'd be surprised, you're like, oh, I thought this guy was terrible. Turns out he's archon. Or like, oh, this guy was really good. Crusader, guardian, right? It's like you're confused. Because everyone has very different skill sets in this bracket, I feel like. No one has started to like really become fundamentally sound in all the abilities. And so people have like major strengths and major weaknesses. And it interacts in funny ways where like someone really bad in the laning stage won't get to use anything else. But if it does get there because the games tend to go really long, like then they look better. So that makes generalizing these brackets a little difficult, but of course, you could just work on everything, right? Um, but if I had to pick out a couple things, there is still the last hitting aspect that I still see a lot of people miss free last hits in these brackets, so that's important to work on. Then there is the awareness, so where to find some of that farm that is going missing. However, to also have mini-map awareness 
for the game plan. Because what happens in these brackets a lot of times is the game just goes really long. A lot of people don't know how to push their lead. So even if they take a good laning stage and they get a lot of kills, they don't know how to push that. Eventually the game goes real late. We get to like 40, 50 minutes. The levels are all 25 plus and the death timers get so long that whoever happens to win a good fight or two wins the game. Whether you were in the lead the whole time or you were losing the whole time, just, ah, oh, three of us stumbled into the Sven carry. We killed him. We win. Woohoo! right? No one was trying to find the Sven. Sven wasn't trying to throw. It was just like, whatever happened. So if you can start to understand that, it's always easier to win games when you're ahead, right? So that's why we're still working on ourselves with our good last hitting and good map awareness. But I do want to emphasize like learning how to identify good fights as you drag into the late game for these brackets. And that's where the secret skill number one is going to come in, communication. Because although there's five players on a team, the game plan and minimap awareness, that can all come from a single player. One person who has good awareness and good understanding of fights can effectively and nicely say to his team, we should not fight here fight around this high ground. Or, hey, if they show two heroes bottom, let's go into Roshan, right? One person who is good at this can elevate their entire team. I, I already know I'm getting comments like, my team never listens, oh, oh, right? I told you, over 100 games. I know many of them, the teammates won't listen. But you're telling me not even like five games, you have like two to three nice teammates who will listen and communicate, right? So. These are the skills I want to highlight for this rank, for these uh, ranks. Um, understanding how to take good fights, this game plan, and then like when you do win a good fight, how do we capitalize on that? What objectives to take? How quickly to like push in, stuff like that. And then that communication. If you can understand this for yourself, you are an individually good player. And then we're just looking to get a couple extra games through our communication to help our team win uh, some extra games we would have otherwise lost to random, you know, interactions. And now we are getting past that 50% win rate into like 52, 53, 54, and you'll climb out of here. I don't want to like lead you away from that fundamentals aspect though. So here's a little quick mini game. Here are some last hits at 10 minutes. Pause if you need to. But what rank do you think these games are at? Again, pause. I'm just going to keep going for the sake of video length. These are all actually Archon 3, trick question, right? And you'll notice there's quite a lot of variability. Of course, every game is unique, so variability is not totally unexpected, even as you go into Immortal. However, there are some things here that are like, you know, 28 last hits as a core, really bad. Even in the worst games, Immortals will typically hit at least 40, because they won't miss things given to them, and they will find ways to get farm even in bad games, you know? So let's try it again where it's not a trick. Okay, these are other ranks, I swear. Uh, pause if you want. But this time we have Crusader, Herald games, and some Immortal games. The main thing I wanna point out here is the total amount of last hits and denies. Now some of you are saying like, oh, Immortals stack for each other, right? Yeah, but I mean, you can even take away some of those stacks if you want, as if no other rank stacks, but nowadays they do. Um, Immortals play a tough game. You're playing against the best players against other best players, right? This is a rank 300 games that I pulled this from. You know, so in these ranks, there are free farm going around that people are missing. So I don't think it's completely fair to say um, I expect you to get the same amount of last hits as Immortals, but I wanted to start approaching that amount. And when we look at the totals, like all these Immortal games, 450 last hits are accounted for in this game. Where are they in these Herald, Crusader, Archon games, right? Where are these extra last hits not happening. I challenge you all to go into some of your own replays and just watch creeps die in empty lanes for a bit. It happens quite a lot. We will work on this in videos in the future to help you identify when you should take farm, either as a core or a support, how to find this farm effectively. But I at least want to pitch that idea out for you. This is why, like fundamentally, if I just show up with an extra 500 to 1000 gold at 10 minutes, I'm going to win an extra fight. And from that fight, I'm going to start snowballing a lead, right? These are the easiest things to practice. I keep saying it, but like, I really want to drill that in. This is the easiest thing to practice on your own. It's very difficult to practice team fights and like the very specific things that happen in a given game, but just last hitting and training yourself to look at the mini map a lot to identify where that farm is. 
and looking at the time so you know when to stack, uh, like stack before you farm, stuff like that. This is stuff you can work on. And I really want you guys to consider doing that if you feel like this is something you're really bad at. You can get to legend or ancient um, kind of really by focusing on yourself, having very good fundamentals and doing standard cookie cutter stuff. However, as you reach this rank, I think it starts to become more important to really adjust to the game because everyone is starting to reach a baseline of skill. We can't just, uh, oh, we're doing standard stuff and we're gonna get ahead because that guy's gonna do sub optimal stuff. He's gonna like randomly walk in and die. He's gonna like buy the wrong items, right? As you get to like Archon Legend, people are starting to also know the basic build. They're gonna do regular stuff. They're not gonna feed you free kills too often. It'll still happen. Um, but it becomes more about earning the lead and like capitalizing on it. And if you give someone a lead in Legend and Ancient, they're more likely to be able to actually end a game early, to be able to make use of that and punish you. So we need to stop giving away any free, you know, advantages, which hopefully you weren't if you've been focusing on yourself, like your own uh, ability. But you now have to earn something, right? We have to outplay the enemy a little bit. We have to know more about their hero than they know it so that I know what to build and how to adjust to it. And I, I mess up everything they wanna do. To do this, we need good awareness, both for the minimap and the times, you know, to be continue to be self-sufficient, avoid easy ganks, stuff like that. But also I want you to be checking enemy items a bit more. What levels are they? Where are they on the map? So that we can adapt like, hey, I know this guy is close to Blink Dagger. I know he hasn't been showing for a little bit. Guess what? I should probably start being careful and that's going to help prevent him from getting a lead and it's going to be, I mean, just good for you, right? You're not gonna die from a Blink Duel or something, right? So it's just good for you to have this awareness to be able to adapt and we have to collect that information in order to adapt. And that's why hero knowledge and itemization are also important. We need to move away from just very standard things and really have a logic to what we're doing, why we're doing certain skill builds, certain itemizations, because we're trying to eke out that advantage. We must buy items that help us get there. Like I bought this drums early so that we can start playing some tempo speed a little bit earlier, right? Things like that, instead of just skipping straight to other items. Uh, there should be a logic um, that is unique to the game a little bit. I mean, a lot of games are very similar, so you can just follow a similar logic, but you should be able to explain why in that particular game you are doing a certain build or not, and what you would expect the enemies to be doing, because that is how you will then formulate it all into a game plan. And I do think game plan is important here because I feel like a lot of people in Legend and Ancient are just kind of like doing very standard stuff, not know how to like adjust to the unique game, but it is hard to do that and hard to formulate that game plan without good knowledge and without the ability to collect the, the information of what's happening in this particular game. So I wanna emphasize these three topics, um, but they ultimately all lead into adjusting for the game, which is like game plan purpose kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. If you get to Divine, you have some pretty solid baseline skills. And in fact, Divine players may even have better mechanics or game knowledge as some Immortal players. Um, now, you know, maybe not like the top Immortal, right? The pros, right? But lower Immortals where you're trying to break into for a lot of Divine players, your mechanics and your game knowledge are probably pretty similar in a like individual basis of like what you know about a given hero, stuff like that. Of course, you will still need to work on it. Everyone always needs to work on like everything, but that's not usually the like strict issue for divine players, uh, in my opinion. I think divine players are good at capitalizing on opportunities given to them, but I don't think they know how to identify those opportunities as much and make them happen. Um, so like, oh, this guy's a bit out of position. Now I jump him and we win this team fight, cool. But did you know how to bait him out of position? Did you know how to like take a good team fight top by forcing someone to go bottom by doing something like that, right? Um, we're starting to get more into like the meta of Dota and like macro micro movements in the map, like made someone go bottom, they showed here, now we can do stuff top. I think this is where divine players struggle a little bit. Um, it is harder to just individually carry games at this point. You need to really have more like team impact. Even by like Legend and Ancient, I think it's harder to individually carry like all the way. It, it, it's really important to like know, here's the heroes I gotta play with. 
here's the player, uh, like the heroes I have to stop by invading, things like that, um, where to be, what to do, and I gotta do it faster than the enemy team. And that's why like the, sec the second secret skill is speed and efficiency. I actually do think that there are divine players who have as much uh, like mechanical ability and game knowledge as uh, many immortals, but they're just slower to arrive at the same conclusions and they don't know how to like force those things to happen. They just know how to identify it, but it really becomes about like doing these things quickly. So like, oh, this would be a good time to gank because that guy's dead, right? The better player, the one who made it to Immortal, knew he was waiting for someone to die. So he already has the clarities and the smokes and the wards ready so that the second it happens, he's like, he's going. He has all the regen he needs. This is the time I'm ready to go right now. I know that I won't make it here, so I'm not gonna bother walking there. I'm gonna hit this hero here. And then like a divine player is like, ah, oh, it's about time to pull, right? Walks over, ah, oh, I didn't make it, ah, oh, walk back, right? It's these wasted seconds here and there that add up. Um, so for a lot of divine players, I really recommend spending some time outside of the game, thinking, uh, maybe going over some replays, think about what should have happened, what could have happened, what would have been, like good to do, bad to do, stuff like that, because that's how you develop that speed and efficiency. Um, you need time to like arrive at the right conclusion and think through these things, but then the next time you appear in a similar situation, you gotta be able to identify it real quickly and then like get to it, get going. Um, not take so much time like dilly-dallying, like ah, I'll farm my camp first, whatever, right? You gotta have a sense of urgency. Like the window is now, there's 15 seconds. If you don't go right now, the window is gone. And the difference between divine and immortal players is that immortal players will take more of those opportunities. And divine players are just slower to identify, like to foresee it coming and then be quick to like, okay, it's finally here. Let's go about it and do it. As you get into immortal, you have to be pretty consistent with your abilities. If you say don't press BKB in 0.2 seconds, that might be the game ending mistake. You know, like you just get punished hard for any small mistakes. There's less margin for error. You have to consistently do the right thing. Like, oh, you missed the pull, laning stage is over. You lose, you lose the lane. You have to now look to recover elsewhere. Immortal players know how to push their leads. So it's gotta be like, you gotta be very careful about this stuff. Now, of course, there's always a way to come back into the game, but like, any of these could be an issue for you if you're an immortal player trying to go higher up. You can't have like a really bad area. You can't have like awful itemization, even if you're like great in the other stuff, because you'll just be punished really hard for that. Um, I guess there are extremes, right? You're just amazing at other stuff. But like for most of us who are like average people, uh, you got to be like pretty good at a lot of this and you gotta be consistent about it. Any small mistakes could be a big issue. Like. Uh, you picked this hero instead of that hero, like game's super hard now, right? Or like, oh, you stunned this hero instead of that hero, fight's over, right? It's tough. Um, but for immortals, you just, you got to figure out what you're bad at and you got to like bump that up and uh, go from there. Communication, I think can be great in immortal because it's such a, um, it can be punishing if you make any mistakes. If you can be the team who's like, hey, let's kill this guy, right? You can start getting that lead and really get ahead. The problem is there's a lot of ego in Immortal because to make it to Immortal, you have to have your own vision of the game. Um, in fact, you're probably maybe not even watching this video, right? Um, but I find that many Immortal players, uh, they don't, uh, they know it, right? That's it. kind of what happens if you make it to the top of anything. Like they think they got here with the correct vision of the game. And everyone else in Immortal also did something similar and if those views don't line up, I feel like that shows how flexible Dota can be. Like, oh, here's a bunch of people doing like different things. But to a lot of immortal players, like look at all these idiots thinking about the game incorrectly. My way is the right way. This makes communication a bit difficult. Uh, if you're saying like, hey, we should gank this guy. And someone's like, no, that's such a waste of time. We should do this, right? That can be iffy. I won't go into it too much further because it's not the point of this video, but it can make like, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword. Communication can be great in Immortal, but like you can set someone off and it's just like, it would have been better to be quiet. So I don't know. Um, I do want to say the speed and efficiency 
for a lot of immortal players, especially as you get past the entry level immortal and you make it to like the 1000s and higher, a lot of these players know similar things to the pros. It just comes down to like how fast you can do it. Same thing with like the divine thing I was talking about, right? Like I'm not caught unawares of why I lost the laning stage. He just did it better than me. He had the right items. He maneuvered his courier correctly. He did the pulls while I was still floundering around doing something else, right? They're just faster. They make use of all the extra seconds. And that's something you got to work on as you keep pushing into the highest uh, levels. If any of you have ever played like party games and you end up like guardian lanes against like ancient lanes, you probably feel a very similar feeling. Like they're just way faster. And as you look back on it, you're kind of like, okay, I kind of know what they're doing. Like I went out of position, they like punished me, but just like in the heat of the moment, the better players are faster at identifying all the stuff. So as you get to immortal and you want to keep going up, you just got to be like really fast, really efficient. All those like small little tricks that were like, oh, those are minor efficiencies no more like you gotta tread swap you have to like do some backpacking right you gotta refill the bottle mid things little tricks and tips like that right that is what it takes to like keep up at that level and the final thing is game sense which is pretty vague a lot of people discuss it in different ways but to me it is interpolating and extrapolating data dota is so complex that there's no way to know 100 percent everything right like this is definitely the correct thing to do it's just not possible. For example, let's take a random lane. Crystal Maiden, Alchemist versus Centaur Venomancer. How many of you have played that lane? But if you get in that lane, you can't just be like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, it's like, ah, oh, we lose, right? No, you have to figure it out. You got to decide like, well, here's my experience with all these heroes. Here's how I think the lane should go. Here's how I'm going to try to win. Um, whoever in that four lanes, probably all four of them have never played that matchup. They got to figure it out. They got to decide what's the best thing to do and try to win that game. So game sense is a lot about coming back to this stuff, how quickly you can do it without actually having to think that hard and long on it, right? Because you can do a lot of math in Dota. You can do science of like why things should happen and spend a lot of time explaining that. In the heat of the moment, you've got no time, right? You load in, you queue two minutes. You got to decide, here's the whole game plan. Here's what I'm looking for. Here's the items I'm going to do. It's got to be fast. Um, now, some of this is like, oh, he dodged that gank. How do you know it was coming? Again, you can tie it back. Like, well, here's the heroes he was worried about. He knows his item timings are coming up, and he should know the enemies know that. They disappeared for a while. This is around the right time. The last time he used the big ability was about 90 seconds ago. This is the time for the gank. So I should now move down into the trees, something like that, right? And sometimes it looks amazing, like the timings just work out. But really what it comes down to is just having played a lot of games, being able to take your experiences and what you understand about the game and apply them really fast to a totally unique game that you've never played before with these different heroes, with this hero doing well, that hero doing poorly. From here, I have to figure out a path to victory. And whoever comes up with the better path to victory ends up winning. That is game sense to me, which I guess I should add, does apply to the other ranks, but like when you're not being punished as hard as you do as you get into like Divine and Immortal, it kind of matters less. If you like had the wrong idea, took a bit more time to figure it out, and you get there, it's like, ah, they're still farming their own half of the map. It's fine, whatever, right? Um, but as you go further and further, like you gotta be faster about that stuff. Um, now that's it. Uh, so I know this is not as, uh, like today we just put stars on a chart, right? This doesn't fully get you out of whatever trench you're in. Um, let me know what you thought of this. Let me know like what makes sense, if anything was eye-opening and what you need help with. So like maybe you know, like, yeah, I struggle with game plan and purpose, but I don't know how to improve on it. I want to hear that stuff because I do want to help you all climb from wherever you're stuck. Um, so going forward, video wise, I do. I think the first couple of videos I'll be thinking about are how to identify like free farm that's just going to waste in the game for uh, like Archon and lower. I see it all the time. But going forwards from there, let me know what you all think you need help with because uh, we will try to, I guess me, right? I will try to make those videos uh, to help everyone out. So thanks for watching. Let me know. Leave those comments. Like and subscribe. Ha ha ha. Whatever. Um, that's it. Bye.